Hold up. Yo, what is going on guys? It is Foxy298 here and welcome back to a brand new video for you guys today on my channel. Today we are back with round 14 of my F1 2016 career mode season 2 with Mercedes-Benz. So if you do enjoy today's video, drop a like on it, subscribe if you're new around here as well. And if you haven't seen my previous video which was uploaded earlier today, I decided to have a go at the demo of Outlast 2, uh, the uh, scary game. Uh, so if you want to go and have a, ch have a look at it, by all means, click the link in the description down below. It'll be there for you guys. Uh, but as we can see then, into the uh, uh, into the uh, session we go, a lot of upgrades made. Ferrari have gone and made three upgrades to their car, and I believe it was chassis weight, something you can see on your screen there, and also Sauber making a few upgrades for this uh, Italian Grand Prix. So Ferrari looking to try and uh, impress in front of their home crowd by bringing in a bunch of upgrades, and so did Haas as well. They actually made some upgrades. So you can see Ferrari are now level and ahead of Red Bull in the vehicle comparison chart. Uh, so Ferrari moving into the second fastest car on the grid. So pretty interesting that. So uh, obviously some work back at the factory for Ferrari. And now they are the second fastest car on the grid. We made our upgrade for this race, which is the fuel efficiency to be uh, to allow us to run into rich revs a little longer. In the driver's standings, you can see that we're top of the table over Lewis Hamilton. And in the constructor standings, it is uh, myself, uh, Mercedes versus Red Bull at the moment. But this is why I want to talk about then as we come into the practice sessions here. Um, after this race in the Singapore Grand Prix, the R&D is going to has the option to be ceased. Now you guys have got the choice, and I need to get, I need your help in the comment section down below. For season three, do you want me to be to stay with Mercedes for another season and become the number one driver and uh, develop the car to its maximum potential, meaning that I would cease R&D early and get all those resource points stacked for next season. Or would you like me to use all the R&D points up this season and then at the end of the season change teams and go to a new team? The choice is in your hands. Let me know in the comment section down below if you want me to stay at Mercedes or so I can cease R&D or if I should stay or if I leave Mercedes and then I won't cease the R&D and I'll keep developing until the end of the season. So the choice is in your hands. But as you saw in practice, we got maximum resource points for the track acclimatization, the tire wear and the qualifying simulation run. Now we're going to be getting into qualifying itself for the Italian Grand Prix. Coming around the Parabolica now as we uh, make the long stretch down the pit straight. This was a really slow and rubbish lap for myself here. I was slower than Ricardo. I didn't really try at all in this session and I got through. Yeah, so uh, I didn't put the hammer down in Q1 because I thought, what's the point? If, Q if I really try in Q1, that could even be my best lap overall. And... Uh, there's just no point. So into Q2 we come then. Uh, Raikkonen sets the fastest lap. And then we come through and set an even quicker lap than Kimi Raikkonen on what he set. So uh, it's definitely showing some pace. But Lewis Hamilton and Sebastian Vettel beating myself there. And I qualify in third with us versus Ferrari. Red Bull dropping down the order. So the vehicle performance comparison chart showing that Ferrari are now the closest contenders to um, us Mercedes in this championship. Moving on then into Q3. And I've got a slipstream and a toe from Fernando Alonso throughout the entire lap. And I set a blistering 124.6 because of the toe with Alonso, making me nearly a second quicker than my t than uh, Sebastian Vettel in the Ferrari. So the toe from Fernando Alonso, I had it round the whole lap. I overtook him on the run down to the Parabolica. Apart from that, I literally had the, the perfect lap and I had the slipstream off Fernando Alonso for the whole lap, making me the fastest car and giving us pole position for this Italian Grand Prix. So all is set then, and we've got the two Ferraris behind us, Hamilton qualifying in fourth. In the driver rivalry, we actually beat Daniel Ricciardo um, after uh, our qualifying success, and uh, we'll be getting a new rival for the Singapore Grand Prix, which will be the next round, uh, as we uh, look to end the European season in uh, this uh, season two here. We're gonna listen to the voicemail though from Emma, and she's just gonna tell us, you know, that we wanna finish on the front, probably first or second beat uh, Hamilton and then get the, char tra the championship points there. So there they are, guys. Let's get into the race then for the Italian Grand Prix. It's race day here in Italy once again. Monza, home to so many records. 
the smallest winning margin, for example. Do you remember in 1971, Peter Gethin beat Ronnie Peterson to the line by one hundredth of a second. There were 40 overtakes for the lead alone in 1965, and Kimi Raikkonen clocked a record top speed of 230 miles per hour here, just over a decade ago. So there's a lot to live up to then for all of our drivers today. With top speeds in excess of 220 miles per hour, few places can hope to touch Monza's crown as the fastest circuit in Formula One. Hard braking zones going into three chicanes make up the majority of the 11 corners on this 3.6 mile circuit. And just in case the slipstream wasn't enough, well, two DRS zones will help encourage some close action. I won't be commentating alone today, of course. Nope, I have the honour to share this commentary box with none other than Anthony Davidson. And you and I were talking earlier today about how tight that midfield battle is compared to the last couple of years. Why do you think that is? Well, I suppose the main reason is simply stability in the regulations. Look at what we had towards the end of the V8 era. In 2012, we had seven winners in seven races. We talk about the dominance of Red Bull at that time, but their advantage was rarely more than two or three tenths of a second. And we've had this current formula now for a couple of years, and that serves to solve any teething troubles with reliability. And let's not forget that these cars are more technical than ever before, so it was always going to take a bit of time for those gaps to come down. You've done well to put it on pole, but we've still got work to do. Trying to cover the inside line off the start. With that then, let's run through the grid order. It's Mercedes in pole position then, with Sebastian Vettel starting alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Raikkonen, Hamilton, Daniel Ricciardo, and Grosjean, Verstappen, Alonso, Bottas, and Jensen Button, Gutierrez, Perez, Nico Hülkenberg, and Verline, Harry Anto, Magnussen, Felipe Massa, and Carlos Sainz. Fiat and Palmer, Felipe Nasser and Marcus Ericsson rounds off the grid. And with lights out just moments away, it's time to go down to the track. I think, guys, as you can see, we are now here for the Italian Grand Prix on the start line. We see we're going to be going from the super soft to the soft to the end of the race. That is our uh, projected tyre strategy. So we're going to be doing that then, and uh, hopefully we can get uh, a nice clean race here for this um, Grand Prix. So as you can see, we're gonna be starting off on the formation lap then, and we're gonna be immediately warming up the tires here. I don't show the formation lap, I never do anymore. You know the drill, so uh, eventually this uh, clip will cut off. As you can see, I'm really warming the tires up quite heavily because I want to get the best brakes and the best temperatures, especially for this difficult turn one. So uh, yeah, it's gonna be interesting. But onto the grid now here, we've got three, four, now five red lights for the Italian Grand Prix, and it is lights out, and away we go for the Italian Grand Prix. A nice start for myself, and also Lewis Hamilton, who goes to the right-hand side, and Sebastian Vettel making the charge now down towards turn one we come. We've got a nice clean run into turn one. No problems, breaking into turn one now, and oh God, we've been here. Someone's made contact with us, Hamilton. Me and Hamilton had a little nose kiss there. But I've spun round and Vettel and Raikkonen have gone through. And the safety car comes out straight away for the chaos in turn one. And for once, not only was there chaos in turn one, but I was involved in the chaos in turn one. And I've lost the lead of the Grand Prix. Hamilton, I believe, hit me going into turn one. And uh, that's caused chaos here. And straight away, I called to Jeff and I'm coming in at the end of the lap. But let's go and have a look. What just happened going into turn one? So I had a very clean start indeed. I went over to try and cover off Vettel and Hamilton, but I saw that there was no need. And I went to the racing line. Hamilton comes dive bombing into turn one. He clips the back of my car, spins me right round. We both then have a little kiss there. Hamilton then reverses back into the Haas. The two Ferraris get away from that. And the Italian crowd are going wild because Ferrari are one, two. Looking on board with Lewis Hamilton, he's now drag straight, drag racing Vettel down into the chicane. He just comes in, taps my car here, and then I'm going to come through and then mwah, kiss there from us two. And then Hamilton backs up into the house. I then drive off into the distance, but just complete chaos already in this Grand Prix going into turn one. And we decide that the best option for us is to come into the pits and put on a set of the soft tyres and see what we can do with this set of soft tyres. Can we take them to the end of the race? It's going to be pretty difficult. It's going to be a challenge. But we're just going to see what we can do. And we strap on those soft tyres. The Haas car is in front of us now. Um, but he is going to be coming into his pit box anyway. So we don't need to worry about him. But honestly, Hamilton definitely needed to go onto the brakes a lot more. I maybe should have seen him coming with his dive bomb. And given him some space. But at the end of the day, I have the racing line going into the first chicane. He should have really let off the uh, 
brakes, put on the brakes a lot earlier. As we see a front wing from a Sauber in the middle of uh, the uh, first chicane there, which is nice. Um, it's always what we want to see. And uh, moving on to the end of lap four, the safety car is coming in at the end of this lap. And we're going to be going up right behind Fernando Alonso. We're now down in 15th place after everyone making their pit stops or if they had to because they're broken front wings. I am now literally kissing Alonso's bum right now, telling him to get a move on with it. I go around the outside into Parabolica because I'm going to do a switch back to the inside of Parabolica. And the green light is underway. We can get racing once again. And Alonso is in front of us as we all come swooping past the Parabolica now. Fernando Alonso dives into the pits. So next up for me is Danny Fiat, I believe, and the Sauber Marcus Ericsson. But I'm in a Mercedes and the double slipstream from the two of them. We're going to go straight past the Sauber and the Toro Rosso and move ourselves up further into the further up the field here. Next up is going to be Esteban Gutierrez in the Haas, followed by a banana car and some manners. So we're going to be looking to try and get them past them as quickly as we possibly can and try and recover from our first lap incident. Now as we're coming through the Curva Grande here, we're trying to get close to Esteban Gutierrez, thinking about making a move into this chicane, but we decide to back out of it at the end of it. You can see we set the fastest first sector. I, I literally tried to squeeze through Gutierrez there. I just didn't want to make contact like me and Hamilton made contact into turn one. Uh, so uh, I just didn't want to do it. So into the first Lesmo corner here. We're going to sit behind Gutierrez. A little bit wide on the exit of Lesmo 1. Now into the second part of the Lesmo corners here. Uh, we get close towards Esteban Gutierrez. Now we're going to try and get into the slipstream of Gutierrez. Making the run down towards Ascari. And my engineer is calling for a strategy change. So apparently in this race, we're now having to convert to a two-stop strategy. Uh, so as we come down to, into Ascari here, you can see we set the fastest middle sector of the race so far. And now we are right behind Esteban Gutierrez, making the drag down towards the Parabolic. You can see everyone is all in the slipstream of each other. We move to the right-hand side of Esteban Gutierrez, and we make a triple overtake here. Down the inside into the Parabolica, going past Palmer and past the uh, manor of, I believe, is Pascal Verline. And now our pursuit is on the other manor of Rio Harianto. And we're going to be getting past him as quick as we can, blinking, making a dash down the pitch straight. You can see how quick we are in this Mercedes car just blitzing past the manor there. And he's in a Mercedes car as well, the manor with that Mercedes engine. They've been known for their straight line speed. So we've seriously got some speed round here in Italy and we need to crack on. Lap 8 of the Grand Prix, we've been building a gap between myself and Rio Harianto and Pascal Verline, who have been battling each other. And now it's time for us to make our second pit stop in this Grand Prix. The soft tyres were okay, but they were quite heavily worn already. About 45% worn at this stage in the race, and uh, there was no way I was going to be taking these to the end of the Grand Prix. So coming into the pits now here for what is going to be our second stop of this race, we are going to be uh, going on and switching to the super soft tyres, and we'll be taking these super soft tyres then to the end of the race. So on they go there, and a nice clean pit stop for myself, uh, and we got the manor, I believe, of, I think it was Rio Harianto was in front of Pascal Verline. So he'll be making an entrance into the pits and then Berline on the next lap, probably indeed. As we come out of the pits here, we come into what is the midst of a battle between Raikkonen and Hamilton coming straight past us there. I had to take a little avoiding action there as they come flying through my screen and down the inside into the chicane. Luckily, we got in front of Bottas, literally bouncing over the curb there as we try and pick up some speed. And now coming through the Curba Grande, we're looking to try and get into the slipstream of Raikkonen and Lewis Hamilton. We're on the super soft tyres, very fresh. These are brand new set, these. So uh, we'll be looking to try and pounce with these. Go into the inside line, down into this chicane here. Down the inside of Raikkonen and also Lewis Hamilton. Great double overtake for myself there. As Hamilton and Raikkonen and Bottas look to scrap between one another. With the Sauber there in front of myself. Coming through the first Lesmo corner here. And we're going to be making our way towards the second Lesmo corner right now. And uh, we're now into fifth place in this race. So the two-stop strategy is what we've had to do. However, we've got Felipe Nasser in front of us. And then we've also got the manor of Pascal Verline. Now, the two of them are going to be coming into the pits. We've got yellow flags behind us. Something's happened. And it's actually Valtteri Bottas, who is behind Raikkonen and Hamilton, has now retired from this Italian Grand Prix. And I'm just trying to think what happens to Bottas in this career mode. Does he have an engine failure? Oh, yeah. And then he crashes into a wall. Nice one, Bottas. Nice one. But he always has engine failures. If someone can count in this career mode how many times Bottas has retired so far this season, you'll get a brownie. Um, so as you can see, we're coming around the Parabolic now. Lap 10 of this Grand Prix, and I'm, my pursuit is on. I've got Vettel and Ricardo to catch. They're on the medium tyres. I'm on the super softs. Fastest lap of the race so far. It's time to push. We've got to catch that gap. It's about 10 seconds. A massive, massive ask 
They're just past the... They're coming towards the Curva Grande now as we come through the chicane. Lap 12 of the Grand Prix. The gap's getting even closer between myself. And these two are battling up front. They're actually scrapping. You can see they're just exiting the chicane now. And I'm about to enter it. So the gap is definitely shrinking. You can see them now on your screens. Lap 12 of the Grand Prix. They've just crossed the start finish line now. That's all leads from Ricardo. The Italian fans going crazy right now. And we again close that margin to about four seconds. So we're really hunting them down, but we just don't seem to have enough time. We've got to gain four seconds in one lap. And this time, you can see them there, just, uh, just on the clip of your screens there. We are so close to Vettel and Ricardo, but I just don't think we've got enough time and enough laps to gain it all back on them. And I don't even think these super soft tyres will be able to go anymore. I've literally been burning these tyres to the ground right now, literally giving it absolutely everything as we're breaking now down into the chicane. You can see the gaps there bouncing over the curves as I really try and just use every inch of the circuit to get in front as we come through the first Lesmo corner. A bit of understeer. Super soft tyres starting to go off at this moment in time. Breaking now in down into the second Lesmo corner here. Once again, I'm trying to make sure that I don't... Uh, ruin these uh, super soft tyres. I've chucked the car into rich fuel mixture because I can rich fuel mix it to the end of the race. Ricardo and Vettel are actually battling going towards the Ascari chicane and I'm literally hoping that they seriously slow each other down in this area otherwise we're not going to win this Italian Grand Prix but it's been a decent fight back considering we were back to front at turn one kissing Lewis Hamilton's nose. Um, so as you can see now coming towards down towards Parabolica unfortunately it's not enough guys. I tried as hard as I possibly could to uh, overtake uh, Ricardo and Vettel, but the gap was just too big and I just did not have enough laps to do it. Sebastian Vettel comes through and wins the Italian Grand Prix. We're going to come home in third place there, so a decent result for us indeed. And wait, what? Why does it, why does it say first place? We came third. Why is this? Hang on a minute. We've won the, have we just won the Italian Grand Prix? Despite the fact it clearly said Vettel won. We, hang on, we just won the Italian Grand Prix. Hang on a minute, we just, how did we win that race? How the hell have we just come through and won the race? Like, uh, hang, I don't, I'm so confused. Vettel and Ricardo were four seconds clear. You clearly saw Vettel won the race. I have just somehow won this race. I don't know how. Literally, to this day, I, to this recording session, I don't know how I've won this race. Somehow, something's happened, and I've won the race. I don't have a clue. Literally, you saw on your screens, it said, race winner, Sebastian Vettel. I came through 4.3 seconds back in third. Somehow, I've won the race. I went after this. I went to the leaderboard, you can see here. I went to go and check. Ricardo and Vettel both had stop-go penalties. However, if you're going to do a stop-go penalty, when they come into the pits, they've got to serve it. So they would have done that. They would have served the pit. They would have served that stop-go penalty. So, to me, I'm still confused. And look at the leaderboards. It's not showing that there's any sort of penalty given to them. So apparently, I finished 7 tenths clear of Vettel and a tenth clear of Ricardo. And somehow, I've been classified as the race winner. Literally, guys, this is a race... This, I thought Azerbaijan was the craziest race of the season so far back in Baku in the European Grand Prix. This beats it just because of the most weirdest race ever. We were back to front into turn one. We were fighting through the field. We were catching Vettel and Ricardo, And somehow, even though I finished 4.3 seconds back, I still won the race. I have no idea. It didn't say they have penalties classified at the end of the timing sheets. So that's why I'm so confused. But guys, if you have enjoyed the Italian Grand Prix, leave it a like. Subscribe if you're new around here as well. And uh, I'll see you guys for the next race in the Singapore Grand Prix when I try and get my head around what the hell just happened. Until then, guys, take care. Peace.